trivia time on our program here. Mexico is this state's largest trading partner, but any idea who is second? It's our neighbor to the north, Canada, and the man who wants to be the pri next prime minister there, rather, is a face you likely recognize. It's Kevin O'Leary, Mr. Wonderful from ABC Shark Tank, who sat down with us to talk about Donald Trump, why he isn't worried about tearing up NAFTA and turning celebrity into political power. Kevin, it's nice to see you. Great to be here. Thank you. You want to be prime minister of Canada? I am going to be prime minister of Canada, not want to be. On, on your website. I don't do things and fail. <laughs> uh, well said. On your, on your campaign website, uh, Kevin, you wrote that with the election of Donald Trump to our south, Canada's largest trading partner is headed by a businessman with an aggressive strategy that could hurt the Canadian economy. How so? We're not like the Mexican relationship. Ours is a balanced trade situation. We don't have a huge deficit on either side of the border. So I don't know, I'm not sure that Donald Trump knows that, but he's going to find that out when he starts negotiating because you really can't be protectionist with a trading partner that's equivalent and is responsible for 9 million U.S. jobs. Think about that. President Trump wants to renegotiate NAFTA. Well, NAFTA is a, is a North American agreement. Canada's a partner. Yes, it is. But there's also an agreement that many people forget about that Ronald Reagan and a prime minister called Brian Mulroney negotiated a long time ago. It's called the Free Trade Agreement, and it sits underneath NAFTA. If you were to tear up NAFTA right now, then you default to the Free, free Trade Agreement. What's different in the Free Trade is there's no intellectual property protection. So that's not good for drug, tra drug and pharmaceutical trades, that kind of thing. There are obvious parallels between you and President Trump. Uh, businessmen, reality shows, etc. Uh, what are your thoughts on his first month in office? He's probably the first politician in modern times that actually kept his promise, which is shocking everybody. What he said he was going to do, he is doing. Now you may not like the, the candor by which he's doing it, you may not like the style, you may not even like the outcome, but it's not that he didn't telegraph this and say he was going to do it. The true measure of Donald Trump won't be known for a couple of years now, but meanwhile, the stock market is loving this guy. How long will it last? It's a good question. I mean, one of the issues I, as an investor, look at is you've got the banking sector, which has been beaten up by regulation and high taxes for the last decade, been under pressure. And all of a sudden, nothing's changed. We don't have deregulation. We don't have lower taxes yet. But we've got the animal spirits back. And those, those sectors, small banks, large banks, are up 20 to 25 percent in 16 weeks. That generally generally is, is extremely rare, and I think we have to go with caution, waiting to see when these deregulations occur, when these taxes are lowered, because there's no evidence it's coming anytime soon. You're an immigrant, half Lebanese, half Irish. What are your thoughts on what's happening with immigrants in this country here? There's a lot of criticism yep. towards President Trump. Well, that's where, you know, people say you're similar to Trump. Well, I am in the sense that we both work for Mark Burnett on reality television, but that's where the similarities end. If there was a wall around Canada, and my father, my father came over on a boat from Ireland in 1947 and landed in Halifax and met my mother, who was a Lebanese immigrant. If there was a wall, it wouldn't exist. So Canada is a much more inclusive country. We don't have policies like that. The country is basically made up of immigrants from all over the world. Lebanese, Irish, Italian, Greek, you name it. You'll find these communities all over Canada. And luckily for Canada, they're very entrepreneurial. Mark Cuban has been talking a lot of politics lately here. Do you think he should get into politics in this country? I'm, you know, I can't speak for him, but we certainly have had a long dialogue about it. It's one of the most interesting topics there is. What's happening is people are tired of politicians. They're tired of being spun BS. They don't want that anymore. They don't want to be promised 25 things that never come. They want operators. They want people that have a track record of excellence that deliver on promises that, that, that are made, that don't shirk their promises later on. And basically, they want operators. They're tired of politicians. I feel sorry for politicians now. They've really fallen out of favor pretty well everywhere. If elected, Kevin, to lead the Conservative Party and then become Prime Minister, perhaps in 2019, um, will you shed your public persona and try to build a consensus in government? I'm not a politician. I don't owe anybody anything. I don't want to, and I won't, tolerate incompetency. If I see an incompetent politician, the way I fire them is I write letters to voters and they lose the election. I've taken down the popularity of one premier in Ontario named Kathleen Wynne from 48 to 16 percent. When I'm finished with her, she'll be at five. She'll get kicked out in the next election. Why? Because I don't want to work with her. She's a weak leader and she's incompetent. I don't tolerate that in any of my businesses, from Shark Tank up to the big ones I own. Kevin, it's good to talk to you. Thank you very much.